My name's Don Hardy. I was interested in, Japan, in uh, tattooing from when I was 10 years old and used to hang out at the Pike in Long Beach and watch tattooing go on. I had a toy tattoo shop when I was from 10 to 13 years of age. I was putting them on with colored pencils on neighborhood kids. And I dropped out of it when I was learned I was too young to become an apprentice, so I quit the toy tattoos. And then when I was in art school about 10 years later, I started picking it up again and I was inspired to do that by seeing a book of traditional Japanese tattooing. I had uh, liked American tattooing, appreciated it as a folk art, and from sort of a pop art stance, this was in the mid-60s, I was getting my degree as a printmaker in San Francisco at the Art Institute. And I uh, met a man in Oakland, Phil Sparrow, who had been doing some uh, work in Chicago and then moved out to the West Coast, and he showed me a book of Japanese work, and it set the gears turning for the idea of getting in to do something more with tattooing as a, a real viable art form and uh, not just putting on the kind of decals that were going in America at that time. Tattooing in Japan is essentially still an underground activity. The majority of the clients for it are from the, um, the gangs, the criminal underworld there, and people who are interested in very um, classical Japanese culture. You don't find too many three-piece guys from Mitsubishi wearing tattoos. It does tend to be more the guys that are into like the old swords and prints and uh, Bushido, the whole samurai spirit of old Japan. But uh, I think this is a good, this is an important thing for these people to come here and they're having a great time and uh, by sharing the ideas of them seeing the work and people seeing their work, there's bound to be more of this kind of cross fertilization which I think is, is good for any kind of art and particularly in the world today it's, it's nice for tattooing to develop that way and, and strengthen itself by exposure to other cultures and then through that maybe we can understand a little more about other people and instead of everybody killing everybody off we can get along with them a little better and understand that we dig a lot of the same things so I'm happy to have these guys here it's Mr. Nakano. Uh, this man here named Buzz did this and we're from San Diego for now. Uh, she had a really uh, weird tattoo underneath this she's a professional dancer and I thought that she would make a little more money if the, she had a nice tattoo to show off and that's why we did the cover up last year. I'm Ren. I'm from San Francisco. The Joker was uh, my comic book one where I went in and I just went to Bill Salmon and I said, I want this on my arm. And he put this on my arm. And it looks better on my arm than it does in the comic. He's playing gin with Two-Face. Do I have the same smile? <laughs> I don't know. Some people say I do. Uh, I'm from Amsterdam and my name is uh, Hanky Panky. I run a shop in the uh, most notorious places in the world, the Red Light District in Amsterdam. I do a lot of Americans, they're all window shopping over there, and uh, well, it's a hell of a place to be. Uh, like what the European standard of tattoo, and it, it, it's uh, for a, a long while it's been a sort of behind on what was happening in the States, especially like the San Francisco uh, area, where I mean, when, when all these. Uh, real art guys getting to the tattoo and then uh, doing like fantastic stuff and, uh, but now like I mean all these guys have been looking in all these at all that stuff for years and now all, there's people now like a guy like Ian in Redding and Mickey Sharps who are doing real fine uh, fine stuff in fact they're picking up on their own North European old tribalism is uh, uh, well they're doing like old Viking stuff and old Celtic uh, uh, tattoos. Real nice stuff. Support to my girlfriend that Greg Irons did before he got killed in 1985, I believe it was. He got killed in traffic. Greg was one of the most popular artists in 
modern tattoo time. Zeke Owen did my back work in 1974. As far as the mechanics of the business goes, he's got it as good. You know, Bob Shaw and Zeke Owen are about the best two outliners in the business. That's all, folks.